Hi there, Laura here, the founder of Get Organized HQ, and I want to share some underrated organizing hacks with you. These can totally change your life, and in my opinion, they're just underrated. And honestly, one of the best things that you can do when it comes to keeping an organized home is really just go back to basics. Those things that aren't actually always all that exciting, but they're highly effective. So let's go ahead and dive in. Number one, the most basic hack that there is, and that is to always declutter first. I have tons of videos on decluttering. I'll link to my decluttering playlist below, so I won't belabor this, but just to say that anytime you're cleaning or organizing, the first thing you should always do is declutter because once you get rid of an item and pass it on, you never have to maintain it or touch it again, so everything else becomes easier. So that's always the first thing you should do. Next, you'll find that I love using organizing bins and boxes for something other than their intended purpose. And one of my absolute favorites and one of the more popular videos on my channel is how to use photo boxes for everything except photos. So feel free to think outside the box when it comes to tools for organizing. And also those photo boxes are just the perfect size and they're perfect for all the little things, pins, paper clips, sticky notes, playing cards, they can fit in your purse, in drawers, in the console in your car. So be sure to check out that video if you want even more specific ideas and to see these things in action. This is probably one of the more important organizing hacks to keep in mind, and that is to give every item in your home a home. So the number one reason why our homes easily get untidy is not what most people think it is. Most people think that we're just lazy. I'll even think, oh, I'm just too lazy to go put things away. But that's rarely actually the case because it doesn't really take a lot of effort to pick up an item and put it away. The, what is holding us back is decisions. If an item doesn't have a clear home, we put off putting it away because we just truly don't know where it goes. And it seems like a lot of work to find a place. So the thing that you can do is to give every item a clear home. And I will tell you, Anytime I go through my house and I start feeling overwhelmed with the clutter, and it's not always stuff that I need to get rid of, it's that I've just kind of started setting stuff places because it doesn't have a home. So give every item a home. This, I feel like I do not hear talked about enough and I do not know why, because I think it's so important. Use the same type of bins everywhere. So don't have one bin for this closet and another type of bin for this closet and another one for this closet or one type of drawer organizer in the kitchen and another in the office. The fewer different types of bins you can use, the better because then it will be more interchangeable. So if you ever move or reconfigure or things are always changing, it's much easier to change things around and I personally really do like to keep a stash of extra bins on hand. So I keep a few extra drawer organizers, a, a few extra bins for the closet. And when I've used the same type all throughout my house, then it's only a limited number of empty bins waiting for use that I need to store. This is one of my favorites, and that is to use multi-purpose bins. I've talked about these a lot, and I always say that if I were stranded on a desert island and could only choose one organizing bin, this would be it, those multi-purpose bins from the container store. They are so versatile. They come in four different sizes. You can use them anywhere, garage, pantry, car, closets, offices, all those kinds of things. So they're really versatile and they're super affordable, especially for the container store. So if you really wanna find out more, I have an entire video that I think shows you 52 ways that you can use them. So go ahead and check that out. So this is so underrated. I literally think I'm the only person I've heard talking about this, but you're gonna love it. And that's what I call reverse organizing. So, so many times when we want to organize a space, you just kind of go through and you look at what's there and you just start arranging it. But the more helpful thing to do is go the opposite of that, reverse that. Take everything out of the space. And I would recommend that you, if you need to, that you break it up into smaller chunks so that you're not getting overwhelmed and taking like, you know, an entire room out and not able to take care of it in a timely manner. Um, so for example, like my desk area, I might start with that, take everything out and then 
put it back as you need it, starting with the most often used items and then going down to the least often used. So like, for example, if I was sitting at my desk, take everything away, I can't see it. And then without looking, I say, what do I need? What do I use here? Bring those things in first because those things that you remember are the things that you need the most often and then arrange everything else around that. When it comes to buying, organizing bins and containers, they love to put out these like really fun seasonal colors. And I love that, but I suggest that you avoid buying those and you stick to the neutral colors because what happens is if you need more bins, those seasonal colors rotate. So the bins that they put out in the spring, they're not going to have those colors in the fall and they may not even have those colors next spring. So if you stick to the, the neutral colors that they're always going to have, you're going to be able to add to that collection, replace something if you need to. This one is fairly similar to the photo boxes, but I love to use what I call bead boxes. Those are even smaller, little tiny squares for so many things. Again, the sky's the limit. They per fit perfectly in bags. And I have an entire video on the myriad of ways that you can use these bonus, super easy to get on Amazon and super cheap. When it comes to cleaning and organizing your home, there are far more efficient and far less efficient ways to do things. So you can get the same thing done in less time if you do it in a standardized manner. And I call these SOPs or standard operating procedures. So if you were in a business, for example, they'll have standard operating procedures for everything. This is a uniform way that you do things. I don't care if you actually have them written down or not, but the more standardized something is, the faster and easier you're gonna be able to do it and the less mental energy it's going to require from you, which is a great bonus. So when I go to clean the bathroom, I don't have to be like, well, where should I start today? Should I start with the toilet? Should I start with the sink? What should I use? Because we do it the same way every time and that allows us to be most efficient. You definitely want to use an effective system for managing your time and planning your days. Instead of doing what most people I think do and what I certainly used to do, and that is that I would make a to-do list either in the morning or the night before, and I thought I was writing my to-do list, but what I was actually writing was my wish list of what I could get done if I had no unexpected interruptions, if everything went as planned, if nothing took longer than I expected, and if I was well-rested and operating at maximum energy the entire day. And let me tell you, most days didn't go like that. So I would go to bed at night feeling frustrated because I didn't get my to-do list accomplished. And that's when I developed the three bucket system, super simple, but it'll be very effective. Now, if you have one of our planners, and I'll put a link down below if we still have any left, these have the system built into them. But the good news is this system is so simple that even if you don't have one, you can still use it. So here's how it works. Bucket one is your top priorities for the day. So that's the top three to five things that you want to get done that day. And I like to ask myself if like this day we're coming to an end and these are the only three to five things that I got done, what would I want those to be? And here is where this really makes a difference. Now, every single day without fail, I get that bucket one done and I consider the day a success if I got that bucket done. So that puts me back in control of my days. And then in bucket two, I put all of my appointments uh, this is probably the easiest bucket if you ask me because you, you generally know like when your appointments are, when you have to be out of the house and or when you have something scheduled and these are the things you generally don't miss anyway. And then bucket three is where that wish list goes. So this is everything else you'd like to get done that day. But again, the day is still a success if you only got bucket one done. And most days I get a few things in, in bucket three done. Some days are just kind of crazy and I get none of them done. And other days I'm like, things are going well and I get them all done. There's something that a lot of people call the container concept or the container principle. And that means that when you have like a space for things, so like maybe you have a container for something or you have a shelf for it, it is meant to contain those items. So when you get more of that, you have to get rid of some to be able to place it in there. So it can't exceed the bounds of the container. Another way of thinking about this that some people do, which I also think is effective, is like the one in, one out rule. So if I buy a new shirt, then I need to pick a shirt that I like less to replace it with instead of just buying new shirts and adding and adding and adding and then getting overwhelmed. 
When you are decluttering, which can be a challenge for most of us, sometimes it's hard to let things go. So I like to take a picture with my phone of things that I want to remember, but I don't think I need to hold on to. So that helps me let go because now I know I can go look at that item anytime I want in a photo rather than having to hold on to the physical item. Another super versatile product that you can use to help you organize are Lazy Susan. So those are the round things that spin and they come in all different like sizes and types. Some of them have like sides that are pretty high that really contain things that might spill out. And some of them have like are more like for bottles and things because they don't have much in the way of sides. I actually have an entire video on how you can use Lazy Susans. I'll link to that. But that's a great tool to have in your organizing toolbox. When it comes to maximizing space, especially if you have less storage or like a smaller space, I encourage you to use the vertical space. There's a lot of hidden space that you don't realize when you don't use your space like all the way up to the ceiling or uh, under beds is another one or wall space. Uh, behind doors, you can use um, a shoe organizer for all sorts of things, not just shoes. Like I said, I love to repurpose things or you can put hooks and have like your scarves or coats or things like that. So take advantage of all those extra spaces if you're trying to maximize. Labeling is fairly underrated. Now, I know we all like those pretty, pretty labels, but even if you're not gonna do pretty labels like you see behind me, they're not just to make it look pretty, they actually serve a purpose. And when you label something, and like I said, you can do it with like a sticker and a pin or just a very simple label maker from Target. They don't have to be fancy. It helps you put things back where they go. What's funny is this is true even if you could obviously see where it goes. Like for example, in these bins behind me, they're completely opaque. I can't see through them. So I wouldn't know what was in them if they weren't labeled. So obviously those serve a very practical purpose. But even if the bins were clear and I could see what goes in them, it still helps me put things away because in our mind, it just feels kind of weird and wrong to toss something in where there's a label and it's not the right spot. So it really does help solidify the home for everything and it helps us and other family members put things away where they go. I'd love to hear if you have any organizing hacks that you feel are underrated, let me know below in the comments. And meanwhile, go ahead and check out my decluttering playlist that is linked below to get you started on step one, which is decluttering.